Hello guys, welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we're going to start our three-part series on the June 2018 My Monthly Hero Kit. So let's start with part one. Now to unbag our kit. This month's kit has a seaside theme. And in the first pack we have all our wonderful little accessories that come with the stamp kit. And of course the beautiful layering and silhouette stamp kit. The first thing I'm going to take out of the accessory bag is the Seafoam Glitter Spray. We have had glitter sprays in their packages before and this one is a beautiful green and it's in a much bigger bottle as the last ones. We also have four ink cubes, um, deep ocean, summer sky, soft sky, and soft granite. There's also these beautiful thing by Freckle Fawn, these little star and shell stickers. And of course, the piece de resistance, the wonderful sand embossing powder. And it is gorgeous. There is little specks of brown and tan. And when they're heated, they're actually gold and copper. And they're very beautiful. But it almost looks like it's already, when you put your hand in there, if I can get this lid off, it's on there very well, you get this beautiful, almost beach sand look to it. And let me show you on my finger. See, it already looks like sand. Now for the stamp kit. This is a very wonderful beachy theme. Got some wonderful sentiments in it, as well as silhouettes, as well and layering stamps, like greetings from my happy place, a beautiful sand sketch, hello, enjoy the beach life, life is better with sandy feet, with sympathy and thinking of you. You get these wonderful silhouettes, you got mermaid rock, beach ball, dolphin, chair, sailboat, and a bunch of seashells and palm trees. There's also these wonderful clouds, and they are a layering stamp. So you get two layers with the clouds and three layers with the water. There's all kinds of fun stuff. And there are some corresponding dyes that go with some of the silhouettes and the clouds and the seashells and beach ball and chair. Very fun. So I'm going to cut those out, and I'm going to show you what you get. All right, so here's what you get for your dies. Now, you don't get one for the bird or the sailboat. And I'm a little bummed about the sailboat. I think the sailboat would have been a beautiful little die also. But you do get a palm tree. The clouds have a layering die, um, as well as this mermaid and her stone, the, sea, the beach ball, the chair, the dolphin, and the seashells. But like I said, nothing for the sailboat but it is still very beautiful but let me see if i can get this glare off so you can see this sailboat better there we go now these layering stamps here for the water can be used two ways you can use that straight line as your horizon line or you can flip it over and you can use it as waves which is kind of fun too because sometimes the water is calm and sometimes it is not so let's start with our first card. Now I put some sticky glue behind this panel so it wouldn't slide because I was a little concerned. Sometimes the Hero Art stamps stick really good to my paper, even in my stamp positioning tool, and it's hard for me to get it repositioned. So I put some adhesive down on the back of my panel just to hold it down so it wouldn't move. So I am starting with the darkest color that came in that kit. And I am just stamping the top layer and I'm going to do the reverse layering. I've shown this in my Alta New one with the Vintage Roses that sometimes doing a reverse layering instead of doing the back piece first doing the front piece it actually makes it easier to line up. Some people say really but it does and it also makes your stamp look more blended. So that first color was the Deep Ocean and now I'm going to go in with the Summer Sky. And I'm going to do the second layer. I'll do both techniques in these cards. I'll, for my next one, I'll use the regular way, which is taking 
the bottom color first and then going up. But I'm going to show you this way first. And I'll also leave a link to that vintage rose video above too. Let's get that clean. One thing I do have to say about Hero Arts inks is they do stain your stamps a little bit. But I have to say for this kind of stamping, it's working pretty good. Usually I'm not a fan of stamping with their inks. Only because sometimes I feel like it bleeds a little too much. But for the water, it doesn't seem to matter. It's not as detailed of a stamp. It's kind of more of, you know, layering for fun texture. And now I'm going in with the soft sky in my last layer. And you see how it blends in a lot better? I, I really love doing it this way. And I think from now on, it is going to be my way to use my layering stamps. Because I feel like I can layer them better. Alright, so I don't want to get my water that I just stamped contaminated. So I'm using some stamp masking paper from Inka Dinka Doo. And I'm going to stamp the largest, more full stamp on this with some light sand. Desert sand ink. And I'm not being concerned at how perfect it's stamped. Because honestly... I'm just going to cut this for a mask. So I fussy cut the bottom part of this on my paper. And I'm going to stick this mask over it. That way it covers it enough. Now I was going to use this Memento Desert Sand. But I think I'm not liking how it's blending. So I'm going to x -nay that. And I'm going to take out antique linen the brushed corduroy and I'm going to do it with my distressed inks and layer it so I'm starting with the antique linen and I'm going to speed this up because putting this base color down did take a little while and I don't want to use up our time showing you me blending this panel. So I'm making sure I'm covering the whole bottom with it because and I'm not too concerned if there's spaces that are not um, colored because I'm going to go over it with the brush corduroy and kind of blend them together anyway. All right, so now that that's done, we'll come back to regular speed. And like I said, I'm going to go over this with the brush card. And I'm not concerning myself how perfect this is. Because honestly, I'm going to come back over with the antique linen again and soften it. But I'm getting down the basis of this color. That's another trick too. If you get blotches of your Distress ink on a paper and you can't spread it. I mean, the oxides spread really nice, but the regular just right think sometimes you get those little sponge marks. Just go over it with the lighter color and blend it again. That will soften the color and it will blend it in a little bit better. So right now it looks a little splotchy, but wait for that antique linen. Here it comes. And I'm going to blend it. Now, it is a sandy beach, so I'm not too concerned about how uniform it is blended. And I'm going to heat set this just to make sure that most of the moisture is gone from this. Because I'm also going to use my anti-static tool because I am going to use that beautiful embossing powder and put some sandy feet on this card. This card is actually going to end up being for my son. His principal is retiring and... I thought this would be fun since he loves going to the beach and walking around barefoot. That this was going to be perfect for him. So I am going to layer this down. And 
So I did the first foot, I heat set that, and now I'm going to put the second set of feet. And I'm going to go diagonally across this card. But you see how when it heat sets, it almost gets a lighter tan, and then you get little specks of gold and even some of the copper showing. It's a really fun mix, because I had one that was similar to that by, I believe it was Stimpen Stimpendious. That was very similar to this. It didn't have the copper. Uh, actually, it did have the copper. It didn't have the gold in it. But it's very similar. And I love that one to death. I use it a lot for Christmas cards because the copper and the white were just perfect. But this one is going to be a fun one to have too in my collection. And I love the specks in it because honestly, sand is specked. You don't get one solid color in sand ever. There's always different darker and lighter shades. And there it's all heat set and across. I am going to end up cutting off the top part where I had that white showing. So I am putting in the Bahama Blue, I believe, the Enjoy the Beach Life. And for my front sentiment, I am putting the Life is Better with Sandy Feet. So I'm going to get that all ready to go my Andy static tool. Oops, I should take off the other one. And I'm also going to do that in that sand embossing powder also. This card was very fun using a lot of the aspects, the very simple aspects of this card. All right, so now you all know I usually use the Elmers. Um, I've been having a hard time finding the refills. Some places are completely sold out, so I was stuck trying to buy another type. And I'm trying out this Ad Tech Crafters tape. It has a lot of the same aspects. It is permanent. It is photo safe. It is all of the above that the Elmers are, and it is also refillable. And in fact, I think even the cartridges might even fit in my Elmers. Um, but I'm using that instead because I'm trying this out because honestly. I don't know if Elmer's is not making them or the stores are just running out. Um, but I haven't, for like three weeks now, I haven't been able to pick them up. Luckily, I had enough in stock. But So we're going to try this out and see how well it works. It is a permanent tape runner. I usually don't use the dot runners because some of them are not permanent. And I prefer a permanent tape for my cards only because I want it to hold. So... I'm going to adhere that to my craft foam and then adhere it to my card form. I had a corner that didn't stick well. And then I'm going to adhere Life is Better with Sandy Feet on the front with some Scotch adhesive squares. So get those on there and then I'll pull back the tape. And to embellish this card, I want to use one of these little shells that came with a kit. And I'm trying to decide. Now, these little shells are not shiny. They are matte finish, which is kind of cool because I first thought they were shiny myself, and then I was like, ooh, they're matte, which is kind of different. But there's that, and you see the little glistening sandy feet. It's really cute, and I love that little seashell just enough. Now, I'm going to take out my, I believe it is, I think it's scattered straw. I'll put it. The name down below for you and I'm going to cut out a little circle out of masking and yes I know I got a little on the top but that's fine what I'm going to do is going to go now I use the masking twice I use the outer layer to make the moon and then I'm covering up my moon with the center part and I'm reusing that little piece that I had left over from covering up last time and I am going to make a beautiful scene sunset scene here We're using pinks and purples so I'm going to start adding some of my distress oxides in the warm lipstick and the I believe I'm using the wilted violet and I don't know why I started doing the distressing on my 
stamp positioner. Um, for the first color, it wasn't a big deal. You'll see me change my mind once I get to the second color. I don't know if it was just I was playing on stamping first, and I just didn't realize that I still want it. I have a little brain fart on my part. So I'm going to take that off that stamp positioner, and I am going to now add the wilted violet around this. I love putting pinks and purples together. And I love that I'm actually, with that masking paper, you can actually mask things off. It doesn't affect it. I do find if you put it on a, an embossed surface, it doesn't stick as well. I have tried that and I've had it slip and move while I'm doing it. But when it's on an ink surface, um, it sticks pretty well. It's no bit worse than post-it tape. Another thing is post-it tape. If you have post-it tape and you want to use that, um, even little post-its sometimes for like straight edges if you can't find this masking tape to do it. I like it better because it doesn't stick as hard on the card so it actually stays better and it doesn't tear your paper. Now I'm going to line up my water and I'm like I did before I did the reverse. Now I'm going to do it the way most people typically do it. And you're going to see I'm going to goof with this and that's what I'm going to tell you. Sometimes the reverse works better. Because you have your most darkest line down. So this lighter color is not going to contaminate it as much as if you do it this way. But I'm going to fix my goof. And you will see this later on. Um, I'm going to keep on going on this. And see, that's why I put some stick it, sticky repositional tape behind my other panel. Because I love Hero Art stamps, but they tend to stick to things and they pull up your paper on your stamp positioner sometimes, and you gotta reposition before you start again. I don't have it with any other brands, it's mostly just Hero Arts that does that. I don't know why. It's probably the high quality of their photopolymer. It just loves the paper. So now I'm gonna put on the second layer. And this layer is gonna be in the Plum. I think it's a sweet plum. And the first color, of course, was the lilac posies. Now, this is where I'm going to goof. And I'm going to warn you ahead of time I did goof. My paper slipped because I'm doing this in black tuxedo, they're our darkest color. And my paper slipped, and I realized I didn't line it up with the top line well. So I'm going to try to reposition it and stamp it again. Now, which is going to give me almost a doubled kind of shadowed effect, as you see. And it makes it a little blurry. Now, to fix this, I was going to give up and just do it again. But I figured, let's just make this shadow go down darker. So I didn't do the top line. I just did the bottom. And I sort of fixed it. Because now it looks like the layers go down further. But see where reverse stamping actually is your friend. Because if I had done the dark color before and then did the lilac posies, it would not have shown over the black. But because I did it that way, it did. And that's where doing that reverse technique, even though it seems like it's out of our nature to do it, is better. Now I'm going to try to put this masking one more time on here, but I don't think it's going to take. So I'm going to use some washi tape to hold it down because I am going to sponge on some of my embossing ink on this bottom part with my bottom part of that large part of the waves and I'm going to do a couple layers of this only because its first coat is not going to be as dark and I want it to look like golden sand so 
So I'm going to get that first layer in and I'm going to reposition that tape again. And the washi tape is going to help me a little bit with that. And I'm just going to sponge it directly on this time. And add some more. Now I'm going to add, after I heat set that and let it cool a little bit, I'm going to add another layer. You can never put too many layers of embossing powder. The more layers you put, the more glossy of a finish you may get, and also more of a solid color. And for stuff like this, that works fantastic. I will show it in the next card too by using it to, as a way to cut out custom embossed embellishments. Um, so now we're going to use this silhouette of the rock. And you can almost guess what else is going to be sitting on the rock once I'm done. And I took off my masking and you can see the golden moon, which is really beautiful with that purple. And here comes my mermaid. I thought this mermaid silhouette was gorgeous when I saw it. I said, oh my gosh, it's a mermaid. With her hair blowing in the breeze. It's perfect. It almost reminds me of Little Mermaid. So now I'm going to put the first layer of my clouds. And I'm trying to figure out what position I will put it in. I think that would be perfect. That way I can get all three in there. And of course it moved on me again. Like I said, their stamps love to stick to paper. I've seen some people actually um, pre-do it in Versa mark before they stamp with them, and it does help it not stick a little bit. But I'm so afraid that I'm going to contaminate my embossed pad by doing that too many times that it's going to mess it up even more. And I just don't want to do that. So I just reposition. But like I said, the first video I put some repositional tape on the back of it and it held it down while I did the waves. And I think. It's a practice I need to get myself into when I'm using these stamps to just add that to the panel. That way it just doesn't lift my paper. Now to make sure I got these lined up well, it was hard to do it on camera, so I took it off camera just to do it so that I could get them as lined up as good as I can. So I used London Fog and I topped it with a black tuxedo for the shadow of the clouds. Now I'm going to use my add tech roller and we're going to try get that panel on some craft foam there we go i cut it a little crooked so i cut it down a little bit and i also edged my paper with the tuxedo black ink because i am putting this on a black card form and i don't want those white edges showing so it gives it a little bit more of a cleaner look now because we have a black card form, we have to put our sentiment, of course, on white paper. So I am putting Thinking of You in Tuxedo Black ink, which I am going to adhere into the card. So far, I am liking this roller. It doesn't seem to balk as much as my Elmer's does. Of course, it's brand new, so maybe it will balk more as we get closer to the end. But we will see. Now, to embellish this card, I'm going to use my chessboard rhinestones. I've used these in the past and I wanted to show them again. They have a beautiful almost chess or checkerboard design in their facets and they're really pretty and they just have so many facets that they glitter. So I'm going to use this and adhere them with my zig two-way glue. It's my new favorite. I am actually loving this glue. It worked great for adding little tiny embellishments like stars and things because it gives you the precise little dots and you can make them as big or little as you want them. And they come out blue so you can actually see where you put your spot. And it dries clear and it actually holds very well. I think I need one more star. But I'll give you a detailed look at these chessboard rhinestones in a minute. Out, see as close as I can get it, show you those facets. I have a bunch of these on the store. I also have them in colors too. This is the clear, and they are four millimeter. So now on to the last card for this video. 
This will have, of course, the unboxing plus three cards. The next two videos will have four cards each on them. And on the last video, our fourth card will be the bonus card, which definitely stay tuned for that. They're going to be fun. Not to mention next ones are going to be fun, too. I got some fun cards planned for this series. So I am taking some faded jeans and I am putting that in on my just the distress oxide. And then I am taking, I believe it was vintage photo, and I'm adding it on my bottom as my sand. Now I was thinking this was going to be enough white space because I'm going to stamp my water, and then I realized. My stamp is way too small for that space. So I'm going to have to go up further. So I'm going to take some more of my vintage photo and I'm going to add some more on there and bring it up a little bit further. That way, even if the waves overlap over it, it's not a big deal. I think I need a little bit more. Sometimes having your biggest layer to see that, it helps a lot. That way you know exactly how far to go. All right, so we're going to smooth that out as much as we can. And like before, I'm doing the reverse stamping. Now, like I told you, the other way sometimes you miss your line, and it just messes up your card. And I... I never thought of stamping that way until someone showed me and I was like, oh my goodness, I've never thought of doing my layering that way. I've always done it the opposite way. The base layer, the second layer, and the last layer. And now I see you doing it totally opposite. Do the last layer first and end with your base layer. And it does make your stamping better. So hint for all you layering stampers out there try doing it this way it might seem unconventional but it does actually make your stamp better so it's like i've never like i said i never even thought of doing it that way it's just you always thought oh and we were always taught i remember when i first layer use layering stamps i was always taught do the solid layer first then go up but I now that I see it this way, I enjoy doing it this way so much better. So now I'm coming in with my second color. So we did again the deep ocean, um, summer sky, and now I'm going to do my last layer in the soft sky. So once again, using those beautiful ink cube colors that we got, and I do have to say I love that they put the names on these ink cubes. If you I remembered one of the other videos, I believe it was February, I mixed up the colors because before they just told you the name of the colors and you just assumed you knew the names. And I totally goofed up. <laughs> so bad. I had mixed up two color names. And I love that they have the names on there now. It makes it so foolproof. And we always know what color it is now, even later on. I think a lot of people were putting labels with the names on it. And this just makes it easier for us. So now that I got those layers done, I'm going to put on a little sailboat. And I had to once again pull this off screen to reposition. All right. So we did that in Tuxedo Black, and now I'm doing the little bird stamp set that came in. Now, I am going to cut a bunch of 3D layers for this card. So I'm going to do the clouds, the chair, and the beach ball. So I'm going to get them on a piece of scrap white paper. Again, it pulled up the paper. Like I said, I need to get in the practice of just putting some sort of adhesive on the back, just so it doesn't pull it up. All right. So I'm going to start the chair and the beach ball in the rhubarb stock. And I'm putting these on scrap paper because I'm going to die cut them out with the dies that came with it. And I was going to try doing the ball in multicolors, but I think if I had my pens out, I probably would have. 
but I'm going to stick to red and white for this. And then we're going to do the clouds in the London fog. Get them nice and gray. All right, so I am going to separate the clouds from the other two pieces because I'm going to heat emboss the second layer. I had to take it off screen while I repositioned again. And I'm going to do the second layer in the in my embossing powder, and I'm using the Snow Recollections embossing powder from Michaels because I want the wisps to be white and glossy. So I'm going to heat set that, and then I'm going to die cut those out. Now there's all my pieces I die cut out. Now I'm going to frame and make my own little 3D frame. I really love the frame that they had <laughs> with the kit, but apparently by the time I got on there to go buy that frame, it was sold out and I was so bummed. I was like, oh, it's so pretty. It had like a sea fence and the reeds and it was so very pretty. And I was like so tempted to add it to my kit. But by the time, like I said, I got there, it had sold out as well as the kit. So if you did not get this kit, I'm so sorry. I would recommend go join the subscriptions. Um, it's automatically sent to you every month. and you can get your kit sent to you and usually i would say about 98 percent of the times i love their kits so it doesn't matter <laughs> even if i don't like a kit i can always use it somehow but yes and you get free shipping free shipping if you do it so definitely check that out with hero arts and like i said you automatically get it shipped to you every month so there is my little frame that i did in my walnut stain from Distress Oxides. And I'm going to put a little tape runner on the edge of the frame because I'm going to adhere my clouds to make that 3D effect with it. I'm almost making a shadow box card, which is kind of fun. I'm going to try to do a fun, more complicated, more interesting card each video. That way you don't just see the basic silhouettes all the time. And they're not always the same, and there's different. Different techniques we can show. So now I'm going to add my foam tape. And I didn't use my Tombow. Usually I use Tombow. This time I use the Scotch. Because I didn't want my frame to be as raised this time. Um, my Tombow one is a lot thicker. This one's a little thinner. So it's not as high up. Because I wanted it to be a slight shadow box. It's almost the same technique you would use in a shaker card, except I'm not putting anything in the shake in there. So I'm just putting a bunch of foam adhesive, even on the 3D elements. That way they pop up too. So I'm just making sure I got plenty of that on there. And then I'm going to reverse that and I'm just going to check out, make sure everything lines up right. And it does. So now that I've removed all the tape, and I did skip that part because honestly, we all know how to pull paper off tape. So we don't need to show that. And there it is. I lined it up and adhered it. I'm, trim I'm gonna trim that down also and get any excess edges. Now I was gonna put the hello on before I adhere the frame, but I was afraid that I was gonna miss it. So I decided to not. So I'm gonna put it on now. So I'm going to stamp that down with some embossing. Thanks, sorry about it being off camera. And I'm going to put the hello in that embossing powder. And I'm going to tip it as quick as I can so that it doesn't get inside my card on the adhesive. And I'm going to heat set that. Now inside the card, I am putting um, greetings from my happy place because this scene looks like it's a happy place. Now, to make embellishments for this card, I'm going to make my own custom paper. So I am going to take that sand embossing powder, 
and I'm going to put a bunch of layers on just to give it a good coating. And I'm going to heat set it and then do it again. Sorry that we're shaking like crazy. And I want to make sure I get a nice glossy coat. And I think two is going to be perfect. So get that out of our way. Now I'm going to take out that sea foam mist that we got. Let me get a little bit of that in the cap on there. And I'm going to spray this down. Now, one warning about this, and I found this with the last one. Sorry, we got crooked there. Um, I know this is the last time I used the blue one from, I believe it was the August kit. It will smoke and you heat set it. Um, I'm in a hurry. I can't sit there and let it dry, so I'm just going to try to dry it as quick as I am. So it is a little smoky. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what if chemicals in it, but it just smokes a little bit. And I'm going to cut some shells and some starfish out of that and get those cut. So now I'm going to put my panel directly on the card. No craft foam since we already have the shadow box. I was contemplating putting it and I said, nope. I think I'm just gonna put it right directly on the card. So let me get that lined up. And push it down. Now, like I said, for the embellishments, we got all these little seashells as well as the beach ball. I was gonna do the beach ball under, and I decided I wanted to do it in one of the corners above. And this makes a beautiful little scene. So I'm just spreading out my seashells and my starfish. Trying to put a little bit of green and a little bit of the gold sand together. That way it kind of corresponds together. And I'm going to, I was going to do my adhesive roller and I decided I think my zig two-way will be better. So I'm going to adhere it with my zig two-way. Now the one thing I do have to say about the zig it, because it's liquid it dries a little slower um i used to love with the ranger that it would dry faster i mean i feel like they have the same adhesive power i just don't think it dries as fast so sometimes it curls up before you can dry it like it was curling up a little bit while i was trying to get this on and it was kind of bugging me because i'm popping up so i'm going to make use of my ink cubes and i'm going to use them as a weight so luckily I have four ink cubes and I have four corners. So I'm just going to adhere these on and then weight them down. So a little trick. You can make use of anything in your craft room. <laughs> and there we'll put that weight there and now we'll do our last corner. And because I made these little embellishments, I don't need to add any more embellishments. This is enough right there. So I'm going to keep on adhering those down there. And I love the sheen of that glitter spray for the shells because it gives that sheen that shells usually have. And the sand looks like the sandy crust of a starfish. It's just perfect. You can do it ahead of time like I did, or some people even dip dye their little things with the, with the uh, pair of tweezers in the embossing powder and then heat set it too. That works too. I just find it's a little easier and you don't have to keep on redipping it and try to maybe moving your embossing paste, your embossing powder while you're doing it. So it makes it better. And there is card number three. Sorry for the crooked screen, but there you can see all the little details in it and that shadow box, that 3D effect. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please check out our last upload as well as a video specially curated just for you. And like always, we welcome you to subscribe to our channel, click for notifications, etc. But also check out our sign up for our newsletter where you can get crafty sales as well as our newsletter.